This video is made possible by Dashlane. Secure your data from prying eyes by signing up for a free account today. So here's a question to ask yourself. If you could get away with just one crime, which would be the one that you would commit? If you're smart, then you'd answer committing a heist of this building right here in New York City, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Why this building in particular? Because it's home to the largest amount of gold stored in a single place in the world, about $250 billion worth of it. Unfortunately for you though, you wouldn't have any chance of getting away with stealing any of this gold, because the vault inside this building that stores all of it is arguably the most difficult place in the entire world to break into, and they don't care about my stupid hypothetical rules. You see, the Fed operates 12 regional banks across the United States that together decide monetary policy for the United States and serve as the banker of the U.S. government. The Fed in New York City, however, which covers all of New York State, plus several counties in New Jersey, Connecticut, and all of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, is by far the most influential of the 12 regional banks. It controls the largest amounts of assets and conducts the most activity and is located right here on 33 Liberty Street in New York in Lower Manhattan. This bank is where U.S. monetary policy is actually implemented, and the vault the bank controls is home to the greatest treasure on Earth. 7,000 tons of gold bricks that together are worth $250 billion, an amount so enormous it could instantly pay off the national debt of Saudi Arabia. Very little of this gold is actually owned by the United States, however. Nearly all of it is owned by a number of foreign central banks and international organizations. Private individuals and companies are not allowed to store gold inside. The bank charges no fees for storing gold inside the vault and acts as the gold's guardian. Fees are only charged when gold is transported to or out of the vault or between accounts inside of the vault. So now that you know what's inside, what makes it the most difficult place in the world to break into? Well, first of all, the vault that contains all the gold is located in a basement 24 meters beneath the street level. The building itself is staffed with armed security 24 hours a day and surveillance cameras cameras monitor the building and the outside perimeter at all times as well. If you somehow snuck past all of this and got down to the basement, you would find that there is only one entrance into the vault, a steel cylinder nearly 3 meters tall that weighs 90 tons, surrounded by an additional 140 ton steel and concrete frame. This cylinder is usually moved 90 degrees to completely shut off this only entrance. Then four steel rods are inserted into holes that cannot be taken out by anybody until the next business day. When the cylinder is closed like this, it creates an airtight and watertight seal that is so extreme that if you were caught inside of it, you would run out of air and suffocate within three days. If you manage to get through the cylinder and into the vault, you'll then discover that the inside is also monitored 24 hours a day by both surveillance cameras and motion sensors. The vault has 122 compartments inside where the gold is stored, where each compartment is a different account holder at the bank. Each compartment is locked by a padlock, two different combination locks, and an auditor's seal. Anytime gold is transported to or from the vault or in between these compartments, a minimum of three different authorized people are required to be present two members of the New York Fed Gold Staff and one member from the New York Fed Internal Audit Staff. No one person knows all the combinations required to access these compartments. It requires all three members to come together to open any of them. If you miraculously avoided all the security up to this point, then there are still more problems that face you. First, there's approximately 508,000 gold bars located inside, and each single bar is worth over $600,000. The problem is that each bar also weighs 27 pounds, so you better have brought a wheelbarrow or something. If you're inside though, the only exit possible is the same way you came in through which could be dangerous. The cylinder could have been rotated 90 degrees which would trap you inside, or the Federal Reserve Police could be waiting for you out on the other side. Let's be honest though, if you broke into this and it got found out, the entire New York City Police Department would probably be swarming you like you had 5 stars in Grand Theft Auto. If you're thinking you could dig into the vault from above, then forget about it. Like the cylinder, the vault is encased in a massive and thick steel and concrete shell, and the security forces inside specifically look for ground vibrations around it. Plus, you'd be drilling in the middle of downtown Manhattan, which would be more than a little suspicious. To date, not a single physical break-in has ever been attempted at the New York Fed, and for good reason. The security present is extremely intimidating and practically guarantees that any attempt would immediately fail. But breaking into the bank digitally is apparently a lot easier. Back in 2016, an unknown group of hackers 
bankers broke into the Central Bank of Bangladesh and sent fake payment orders to the Fed in New York. They requested $951 million be sent to their bank accounts in Sri Lanka and the Philippines, and the Fed just gave them $101 million of that amount before their security realized what was happening. If the most impenetrable bank in the world can lose over $100 million to hackers on the other side of the world, then you could lose a lot too. You should be limiting the amount of information that you post about yourself online. But the easiest way to protect yourself is to just use a different password for each account you have. There's lots of different ways to keep track of all the passwords you use, but I prefer to use Dashlane. Dashlane will store, fill, and generate passwords for you anywhere in the world across all of your devices so you can make yourself as secure as possible without having to remember. Using the same password for everything is dangerous to yourself. And if you go the safe route and make a long, complicated password, you'll probably never remember it. I used to use the same password across my personal and real-life lore accounts until I fell for a phishing scam last month where a hacker was able to briefly access my YouTube account. Learn a lesson from me and use different passwords for everything. What makes Dashlane so great though is that it works on pretty much every platform from Windows and Android to iOS, and it's not a complicated thing that you have to set up. It simply works, and if it ever finds out one of your accounts has been compromised, it'll send you a notification so you can change your password. For a lot of sites, Dashlane can even change your password for you with a simple click of a button, which is so convenient for me and will be for you too. Click the link in the description to get a 30-day free trial and use the code YouTube2018 for a 10% discount on their already affordable premium plan. It'll make your life easier just like it made mine and you can help support real-life lore at the same time.